Hey guys, MSM here, but before we do today's Army Men review, I noticed a lot of my friends such as Killer Monkey, Devastator XD, Dr. Fishy, they're friends I go to school with in case you don't notice, they run YouTube channels. They all have channel intros and I've noticed I've been on for almost a year but I have not developed my own intro. And I'm not going to make a little video intro like they did, I'm just going to do something simple and kind of related to my channel. Hint, hint, hint. Anyway, down here, we have a uh, model 1944 Mosin Gaunt. I've had it for about three years or so, and it's still missing the cleaning rod. And the reason why it's a 44, not a 9130, is because it has a folding bayonet and it's shorter. And how this little intro is going to work, I'm just simply, before I start the video, I'm going to look down here, press open the bolts, if I can get it without talking to the camera, pull it back, push it forward, close it, and when I pull the trigger, the video will start. So let's give it a shot. All right, so we have another Army Men review for you guys today, and we're going back once again to 1914 to 1918 to review the mounted Russian Cossacks from World War One with armies in plastic. And we're going to go through the packaging like always first, and it's drawn, not painted this time, but I really like, but I still like the drawing. And also, it's just really kind of the same thing, still one thirty-second scale, like pretty much everything I have. There's the choking hazard, all that, just the normal things. I'll put all the prices and everything in the description and actually I'll put the link to it but I'll put the price in the description also and they're the great trading empire they are because they have the five languages and it's made in the holy state of China and the horsemen themselves come in the little plastic bags like you may have seen with my British guys now that I think of it I can't remember if I showed the plastic bags but anyway it's just like plain plastic bags and the horsemen come in one and the horses come in the other but now to get into the figures themselves there's a total of five of them and there's four mounted horsemen back here, and they have the rifles on their back, and there's the one officer who doesn't have them. And the one big surprise I got out of this is that I thought the men could actually come out of their saddles when I was looking at it, but what I found out is that there's just a peg in the horse, and they're molded onto their saddles. Which, I mean, it was kind of, I was kind of disappointed, but just because you'll see with, like, cowboy Indian sets and dollar stores, you'll see how, like, they're not very good with the pegs and everything, but just the way they held up on the pegs, I really liked it, and it's actually a really tight fit, but make sure they're pressed all the way down, because like if you're messing around with them and you're not winning them over, the horsemen may come off, and it's just kind of annoying to put them back on. But anyway, they are very durable, and they are very good, and you may be wondering, if they're World War One, how come I included them in the Road to Berlin video? One reason is because that um, they were kind of the same shade as the Russians, and I kind of wanted to put the whole Hetman Brushnikov idea into it, and putting the Cossacks into it, even though for you history buffs out there, I'm going to get to it, most of the Cossacks actually fought for the German army, and I can't, fi I didn't find that as much of a shocker, because for you history buffs, Vladimir Ilyich Leonov, otherwise known as Lenin, as you might know, purged the Cossacks during the October Revolution, which led to the Russian Civil War between the White Army and the Red Army, and the Cossacks were fiercely loyal to the Tsar, Tsar Nicholas II, who Lenin Leonov, or Lenin, was trying to get removed. So he didn't see them as fit for the Grand Workers' Revolution or whatever he likes to call it. So he killed the majority of them, and actually they killed so much of them, Cossacks actually have like a special place in society in modern-day Russia. So anyway, I actually was going to put some of that, like some of the background, like the Civil War and that sort of thing, in the uh, episode, Road to Berlin episode 2, but I forgot to, so I thought I might as well get it done now. And um, back to the, when well, I was talking about the price earlier, it's... $18, I believe, but I know that sounds kind of expensive, but Armies in Plastic is still running their deal where buy three, get one free, or buy five, get three free. I believe that's it. And you also get like a discount if it costs a certain amount, like 20 or 50% discount, somewhere around there. So, I mean, it, the time to buy it, if you want this set, is probably to buy it now before the deal goes away, even though the deal has been around for a while. They may take it away any day now. But... I mean, that's pretty much all I have to say for this. The Holy Shelf has returned. And the reason why I'm doing the shelf reviews right now is because I'm going to be gone most of the month of June. So I thought I'd maybe do one or two reviews now because they're quick and easy to do. And it gives you guys something to tie you over until I get back in July. In July, I'll try to make episode three. I'll try to make episode three around mid, late July. But then I, yet again, I'll, probably, I'll have football during the summer. So I'll try, I'm going to try to make episode three in July. I just don't have a lot of time in June because I'm going to be out of town. So anyway, guys, I really hope you have liked these Cossacks, and they are going to return to Road to Berlin. And when my lineup for the next thing I'm probably going to review, I'm probably going to review the uh, French Army next, the uh, French World War I Army. And if I can find out what the actual set is from Stalingrad, I'm going to try to eventually do like a mega review of the whole Stalingrad set. And actually, 
I really want to know if you guys actually like me doing arm interviews. If you guys don't like me doing them, just let me know and I actually will stop doing them. I mean, they're just kind of a quick and easy thing to do and they're kind of a quick way to let you know, hey, this is a good set I like, you guys may like it too. So just let me know in the comments what you guys think of this set and all the other reviews I've done and if you want me to continue the reviews. So anyway guys, I really hope you guys like this video and we're almost at 250 subscribers and we are at 42,000 views. I never thought I'd get this far on YouTube and I hope to keep growing and I hope to actually get to 250. And I'm really appreciative that you guys have really stuck with it. I know I didn't do anything for 100 or 200 and I'm really sorry about that. So just really thank you, thank you, thank you for sticking with this channel guys. And I will hopefully continue to keep posting videos for you guys if you guys like them. So please like, comment, or subscribe if you guys like this. And I will see you guys soon. Hey guys, MSM here once again. I just wanted to say something at the end of the video that you might have been a little bit confused on. I actually do have the whole Stalingrad set. I was just thinking in my mind, I was trying, I was thinking in my mind, I need to count up how many Russians are in it. But I do have the whole Stalingrad set. It's not like I have a part of it. I do have the whole Stalingrad set. And I do want to try to do the whole review for the whole set at some point. I just am trying, what I was saying there, I was meaning to say there, I was trying to see if I could find everything, count everything up, and make sure everything was right, because I may have lost a few things. So anyway, thank you guys for all the things you guys have done to help my channel, and I will keep posting videos for you guys. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks.